Thank you. So, say, uh, uh, land and broadband breakfast five times and see how twisted your tongue is. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me to be here and to speak with you today. And a special thanks to the Blandon Foundation and to Bernadine Joslin for hosting this extremely important discussion, as well as the legislators, the Broadband Strategy Board, and the Minnesota Intelligent Rural Community members who are here participating in and taking part in this discussion today. Every day, I am thankful to be part of a state that has a unique tradition of leadership in so many different fields. For a long time, we led in education, we led in technology, we led in innovation. Today, we are reaping the benefits of that success. Unemployment is lower here than it is nationally, <coughs> because for many years we invested in our resources and attention into our kids and into good public policy. But it is important to remember that none of these qualities came easily. We worked hard to get where we are. We made strategic commitments that would play, pay off in the long run, and they have. The time has come for us to make a new round of smart commitment and rural broadband access must be a focus of these. Broadband um, expansion is essential to ensuring that Minnesotans everywhere have access to the tools they need to compete in an increasingly global economy. Without it, they are at a decided disadvantage in an ever more competitive marketplace. Broadband is necessary for all communities in Minnesota both economically and socially. As technology rapidly advances, so does the speed of business. And in order for Minnesota to stay competitive in the business community, <coughs> we have to continue to move at a competitive speed. Communities where mass market broadband is available <coughs> benefit from faster business growth and job growth than those communities without broadband. According to a, a pilot study by Minnesota Rural Partners, 40% of Minnesota's total employment in 17 of our targeted industry clusters is found in rural Minnesota. The study shows that when the rural communities benefit, so do the urban communities. If rural Minnesota's manufacturing industry sees a 6% output growth, urban Minnesota gets 16% of the new jobs that are created by that output. And it works both ways. If rural Minnesota's manufacturing industry declines, jobs and revenue are lost in the urban areas as well. A 2008 study by Connected Nation estimated that expanding broadband access in Minnesota could have an economic impact of $2.7 billion. Fortunately, we've already laid some of the groundwork. As a state senator, I helped lead an expansion of broadband statewide. We encouraged and were successful in getting then-Governor Plenty to apply for federal grants relating to telecommunications. These grants helped to get our rural broadband efforts off the ground. And with some of these funds, I authored and passed legislation for extensive broadband mapping and to start a stakeholder process to build <laughs> consensus around what goals were achievable in Minnesota. I understood then, as Governor Dayton and I understand now how vital high-speed broadband is to Minnesota, not only in the metro, but the rural communities as well. And through the hard work of not just the legislature, but the agencies like the Blendon Foundation, the Minnesota Ultra High-Speed Broadband Task Force, Connected Minnesota, and many others, that many of whom are here today, we have done a lot of good work on expanding access to high-speed broadband. Today, the high-speed broadband availability in Minnesota is considerably greater than many other states. Fiber to the home broadband is available in 50 of our 87 state, or counties. And 72% of Minnesota households with internet access subscribe to broadband. That's 5% higher than the national rate. As so often we strive to do in this state, we are leading, but we still need to do better. The Minnesota Ultra High Speed Broadband Task Force released a report last year which sets the goal of ubiquitous high speed broadband availability across the state. 
In response to that report last year in the legislature, I helped, I, I authored and I helped pass a bill requiring that all Minnesotans have, Minnesotans have access to broadband at download speeds of 10 to 20 megabits per second and upload speeds of 5 to 10 megabits per second by the year 2015. This goal is certainly ambitious and it's attainable. I recently reread the Minnesota Ultra <coughs> High Speed Broadband Report and I could not agree more with the executive summary that says we need to think of ultra high speed broadband access both as communication and transportation systems carrying massive amounts of electronic information for the 21st century. We do need to invest in it and we need to reach our goal of ubiquitous high speed broadband availability statewide. So, how do we get there? Well, we in the state government need to communicate and collaborate with our local governments, with the federal government, with stakeholders, and with the private sector. We do what Minnesota's good at. We work hard, we work together, and we lead. Thank you again for inviting me to be here today, and thanks to everyone here about to take part in this important discussion. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you.